Oh, Sunday again. Another week has flown by. Really bizarre to say a week's flown by while all you're doing is, is stuck in the house when you're contained within the four walls. I thought it would have been dragging on, but uh, I know I've been quite busy anyway. But uh, yeah, it's been pretty manic. Hmm. Right, okay, so where are we all? Um, Roy, uh, hi, Gary from Middlesbrough. Hello, Sandy Knight. I can see you now. That's much better. Much more palatable if you can see me, kind of. I hope so. I've even done my teeth and my hair for you guys, so I'd have been gutted if you couldn't actually see me. Uh, up and running now, thank you. Okay, not seeing anything. Jeff Palmer, you must be able to see me now, but okay. Okay, now, hi, Gary. Yeah, okay, so no need to check now, then I'm just going to assume that everything is perfectly fine. Um, maybe it's because I just had to press the live button. I'm not quite sure, but uh, <laughs> anyway, there you go. Hmm. So guys are still coming in. Greetings all. Todd, how you doing? Philip, how you doing? Maura, how you doing? Um, Salvador. Sal Salvador. What a nice name that is. Hello, my friend. Good afternoon, Gary from Spain. See, it's fantastic. I just love that. Tell me where you're from as well, guys, so I can say hi. Um, right. Let's very quickly get going. I've got so much to cram in this week, and I've, um, I've got two guests to talk to as well. So, what we're going to do, while we're just chatting, he says spitting beer everywhere, what I'm going to do is, let's put the quiz up on the screen, like so. So let's pop that there. Just while I'm saying hi to everybody, there, so now you can see me as well. While I'm saying hi to everybody, you can have a look at the uh, the other questions that I set on my Facebook group this week, just for a bit of fun, no prizes, but basically guess the logo. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen logos on there. Like I say, just for a bit of fun, but I wonder how many people have actually got all thirteen. So while I'm saying hi to everybody, what we'll actually do is um, I'll show you the answers to these questions after I've spoken to my first guest. Remember, I've got two guests. If you think you know all the answers, then you could pop the answers into the comment section if you don't mind. Also, on top of that. If anybody's got any questions for my two guests today, then please pop the questions down. And I promise you, because I didn't do it last week, I spent so long chatting with Steve that I forgot to actually go back to the comments and have a look at the questions. Because, um, yeah, it, your time is just so consumed so quickly, especially when you've got entertaining guests on. And I've got two of those today, so I'm really, really quite excited. Um, the guest today, by the way, I'm sure you've obviously seen it from the thumbnail anyway, but I've got Nev, Nev on, and Nev lives in a camper van, and he basically wanders around the whole of the UK, I'm not sure if he goes abroad or not, I'll ask him that question when he comes on the show, but Nev wanders around the whole of the UK as a photographer, full time, living in a camper van, how cool is that, that's cool isn't it, surely we must all be thinking the same thing, wow. Just awesome. On top of that, I got Alan Wallace as well, and Alan is an astrophotographer. And I'm interested to speak to Alan because uh, he gave me a bollock in a short while ago. So <laughs> I want to speak to him. Uh, he's just a super, super guy. Another Welsh, fellow Welsh guy. Um, hmm. So looking forward to speaking to him as well. All right, let's get rid of that off the screen. We've had enough of that. Oh, where are we, where are we? So let's have a quick look. I like to try and keep a formula. The formula is, it says here, say hi to everybody, right? Okay, so let's say hi to everybody. Let's go back to my comment section. Um, so we're uh, probably lost loads of people now, but um, challenge of pouring a Guinness too hard, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like to open a bottle of Guinness every time I do a live show. It's my little treat. It's the only one I have all week. But uh, um, I got in trouble by so many people. I got told off by so many people last week because I'm pretty crap at pouring a, a Guinness. People were actually leaving me really nice comments and then giving me instructions on how to pour a Guinness. So this week, I've got All-American on your asses and I'm just drinking a bottle of Budweiser because it saves me getting in trouble. Actually, the real reason is because I haven't got any Guinness left. Hmm. So you can't have a go at me. 
Uh, Sonny Hampshire, Simon, how you doing, mate? Joe, hi from Liverpool. Um, hi, Gary from Ontario, Ontario, Canada. So we've got Susan there as well. Hi, Susan. Hi, Keith. Hi, Joe. Hi, Davina. Hi, Nigel Thompson. Hi, Andy Dean. Cheers. Living, he lives in Canada as well. Wow. Um, how cool is that? I keep saying it every week, but it just it blows my mind. It really does blow my mind. Chris, hi from Scotland. By the way, we talk about Scotland. We've got Murray on from Scotland's Mountains. Uh, if you saw a video uh, I did with Murray just a short while ago. Um, uh, very, very good friend. Actually, he's not really a good friend at all. I just keep stalking him. <laughs> but he's on. So you can say hi to Murray as well from Scotland's Mountains. And if you've never checked out Murray's work, come on, guys, please. Scotland's Mountains. He is a ledge. I can meet trying to sound like a teenager. Um, okay, so where are we? Chris S. Hi from Scotland. Okay, I've just done that. David Wilson, hi from the Lake District. I hope you live there, David. I'm not going there, but I hope you live there. Lucky you. Um, Guy, how you doing? Anthony, hi. I've been trying the podcast you guys are doing. Okay. I've been... I, I, I haven't got my glasses on. I've been enjoying the podcast you guys have been doing. Thank you very much indeed. Dave Murray. Um love kev's vlogs we all love kev's vlogs dave he'll be on pretty soon so let's go back to my script okay saying hi to people i'll try and do that as i'm going so for the best part of the video i'm going to end up ignoring most of the comments otherwise you get sidetracked and it just becomes really boring and that's why i like to say hi to everybody right at the beginning but uh, like i say uh, we do have we've got nev on we've got nev cartilage on today and alan wallace so if anybody's got any questions for them please leave a question if anything just write the word question in bold so when i'm flicking through all of the comments i can pick them out i've obviously you know, I've uh, got loads of questions to ask anyway, but if it's something, a question that's burning, then um, let me know that. So news, a little bit of news. So I'm going to cover a little bit of news. And if I get time, we're going to talk about this boring ISO thing or ISO thing. Uh, that's still there on my list. I'm going to try and do that. Going to try and critique some of your pictures as well later on. Guess the picture, guess the logos. I'll give you the answers later on as well. So we'll do that. I'll give you my video of the week. But talking about video of the week, I've got to mention last week's video of the week. So this is what happens when you're kind and you get it wrong. You get in trouble. So you, even though you're being kind, if you get it wrong, you get in trouble. So last week's video of the week, um, I absolutely love this. I watched their latest version again last night. And it's actually called the pub quiz. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm doing it again, aren't I? Okay, it's called the Photography Pubcast. There you go. So I actually wrote it down to make sure I didn't get it wrong. It's called the Photography Pubcast. So if you want to YouTube that, do a search in YouTube for that later on. I think they're on something like week four or week five. Can't really remember. But last night's one that I watched live was um, was quite emotional, actually, especially by my very good friend, uh, Mally. But emotional for all the right reasons. But I love the guys. I like, you know, their banter and all the rest of it. But that was last week's video of the week. And that is um, the photography pubcast. So apologies to you guys for getting it wrong last week. But there you go. Another mention this week. So I'll also give you my video of the week, which is a really really weird one a really weird one this week but I absolutely love it right I've got some more news um, but before I do that let's cut off with all the boring stuff what I'm going to do now is in the green room I have a whole bunch of people so I'm going to throw myself into the green room rather than pull them out one at a time and say hello to everybody so I've no way of knowing what they're talking about so if i throw myself in and they're talking in the middle of a conversation and they're swearing i do apologize but here one second hang on one second I'm gonna dive in this <laughs> it went really quiet, <laughs> Is it? Is it, yeah, be quiet. <laughs> so let me just get this right now then in the green room i've got alan wallace alan say hello this is going well alan i've got nev hello Hey, I've got Gary. Hello. I've got Tony. Hello, guys. What's happened to Alan? Alan, are you there? To be fair to Alan, Alan was moving some stuff around or getting a drink from his, uh, whatever it was, in his room. Uh, have you guys been speaking to Alan? Is he definitely there? Yeah, he is here. Alan, say hello. 
Right, okay, right. Well, uh, assuming he hasn't done a runner, just very quickly, I was going to grab you in one at a time. Nev, I'll come and grab you in a second, so don't say anything. But Tony and Gary, my very good friends, who look after me and all the admin side and all the rest of it. Uh, guys, what have you been up to this week? You go first, Tony. Oh, what have I been up to? Well, finish the decoration. Got the camera out for the first time okay. and did a bit of off-camera flash in the um, water splash stuff, dropping fruit into... Uh, um, a glass of water and how, how <laughs> on the downside it? because it, it, it was, wasn't was too bad on the downside because I've just decorated the kitchen <laughs> I had to go and do it in the garden <laughs> so uh, I can set the gazebo in the garden put all the sides on it and um, conduct my activities in the garden but it went pretty well it's not going to work is it outside <laughs> I'm doing a it video on I... come on oh sorry yeah no it, no, I, it, it, it went well <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a video on that I'll, I'll explain to people in a second I'm doing a video on that tomorrow I'll explain why I've not done these videos as well in a second um, also uh, we've got Gary on there as well uh, my photography partner uh, Gary first thing he said to me was if you come and say hello to me don't ask me about you know my activities this week and certainly don't mention the neighbours hi Gary hello how are you very good mate so how has it been this week and how are you getting on with your neighbours it, it's been a tense week. It's been a tense week. I, I'm running out of things at home. Um, as you, you may recall, I've been doing a bathroom for about the last three years. Well, right. It's almost finished. Unfortunately, <laughs> in the last three years, I've lost a few of the seals that go with the shower. So right. although it's in, we can't use it. Looks nice, but it's not functional. What, what have you done? You've bought a second-hand shower or something? Is that what you've done, your tight ass? No, it was brand new about three years ago, and some of the things have been misplaced. Oh, I see. Bear in mind, you know, you don't actually work for a living, so, you know, this, the amount of time you've got spare on your hands to actually do your bathroom by now, I can't believe it's not done. I'm kept busy looking after you. Neighbours? Good answer. How are they? <laughs> How's your neighbours, Gaz? You said not to mention them, so how are they? Neighbours are, na neighbors are fine. I've just given them a little wave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Alan, are you with us? <laughs> You guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yeah. Alan. Alan, do me a favour. I'm going to come out of the room. Just say hello to everybody so they know you're here. Alan, just say hello to everybody. You went quiet then, Gary. Oh, dear. Right. Okay, right. I'll come out. I'll let you guys have a chat for a second. This is going to go well, isn't it? <laughs> How well is this going to go? Right, let's have a quick look. Let's go back to my script. So we're going to speak to the guys in a second. Um, all right, okay. Um, me, what have I been doing? I've been uh, actually very busy this week. This small room that uh, in the house is our box room that I've taken over. Um, but we're now going to move upstairs. I'm now going to move the whole of the studio upstairs. We're lucky we've got two bedrooms in our attic. But to be honest, um, <laughs> they're both just being used for junk and have been for the past. 25 years we're quite lucky we only live in a, a semi-detached house but we actually do have two extra spare bedrooms upstairs that never get touched so we're gutting one out and i'm going to move myself upstairs so hopefully next week i shall have in theory uh, a, a purpose-built studio so that's what i'll be doing and that's why i've been away from youtube for the past couple of weeks really I've been watching Ozark on Netflix as well. I recommend that. I've just finished watching two series of uh, Ozark. <laughs> 20 hours of TV. It's a lot. And um, yeah, okay, I'll move on. It's really, really good, by the way. That gets a bit of a recommendation from me. Ozark. Um, where else now then? All right, so let's have a quick look. I've mentioned that... Um, just want to very briefly talk to you about my last video. I put a, a, a video out. Um, uh, again, I messed up on um, a video I put out from the Norwich Quarry, um, Jason Jones's territory. But I went there on the 14th of March and it was just before the lockdown was announced. I had like a three, four day work, five day workshop actually in Wales. And one of the days was at the Norwich Quarry. So I was there that particular day when it, uh, when we had that awful weather. Anyway, long story short, but on the beginning of my video, when I checked to find out the date that I was at the Norwich Quarry, I actually looked at the JPEG image that I created from my trip to the quarry, I created that something like a week or so later. 
So when I put on there recorded the 23rd or 24th of March, it wasn't. It was actually recorded on the 14th. But I think I've uh, I've hit a nerve with, with one or two people. But having said that, um, it's a bit of a head scratcher, that particular video, because I don't know why, uh, unless that is the reason why, in which case that's my own stupidity. But everything about the video in terms of um, the back end, in other words, the amount of people that have left comments, uh, the really nice comments that I've received, absolutely everything is probably outshone every other video that I've done. But for some unknown reason, YouTube hasn't picked up on it, and I don't know why. It uh, hasn't received many views at all. I'm not saying it to try and suggest that you guys go back and watch it, but it just so happens that um, I released it messed up the date on it i think people got upset with it but but the amount of i've received so many personal emails and you very rarely get personal emails i've got loads i was going to read some out but i've got too, there are too many to read out whereby they watched it and it touched a nerve because their dad or their grandparents have worked in you know similar conditions down the mine or obviously the the quarry and so many so many nice emails so if you're one of those people that have sent me a really nice email thank you thank you so much because that means more to me than the actual viewing figures i'm not really that fussed about the viewing figures although it is a bit of a head scratcher i'm still trying to understand but i'll i'll blame myself for that um the second half of the interview that i did with gooch that will be out this week as well and like i said starting on monday and i'm really late to this and i do apologize to everybody because i put a video out saying i'm going to be releasing a video pretty much every other day you know in the downtime but things haven't worked out like that for me thankfully i've been busy in other avenues but i can only wholeheartedly apologize for not doing that so tomorrow i'm going to start that ball rolling i'm going to talk about um flash using flash off camera using flash in a creative fashion so i'll do a, a basic um, video on that starting from tomorrow so I've got a pretty packed week ahead of me this week so thank you for everybody for you know your patience and one or two people have obviously written to me and said you know what what's happened with these emails sorry what's happened with these videos people are assuming I must be making them and and just posting them for the members only and I'm, I'm not doing that I never would do that that's not what my channel is about I just haven't made them yet so I wholeheartedly apologize um, right, okay, so that's our show, so let's crack on. So I want to bring out my first guest now, if I can. I'm sure you guys uh, will know him. If you don't know him, then please do me a favor and check out his work. All right, okay, so let me go get him. Let me go grab him, and hopefully we won't have too many more technical issues. So one second, one second, one second. Wow. Nev. Hello. Nev, how are you doing, mate? I've pulled you out. You are now live. This is Nev, by the way. Nev Cartledge, oh, is that right? Have I said your name right, Nev? You have, yes, that's correct. You just broke up then, but go on, I'm with you. Oh, I hope this is going to work, otherwise this could be awful. How are you, mate? Are you okay? I'm very well, yeah. How are you? Good. So, let's paint the picture for anybody out there who might not know you. This is Nev. And Nev, correct me if I'm wrong, Nev, don't make sure I don't get this wrong, but you live in a camper van and you travel up I and down do. the whole of the UK just taking photographs full time. That's, well, not full time photographer, but yeah, I'm full time in the camper van, Gary. Uh, I've been in it for 14 years and I love it, absolutely love it. What Although it does get cold in. <laughs> God, sorry, living your life like you've been doing, like you're doing now for the past 14 years? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have it any other way, I swear. It does, like I said, it does get a bit cold in winter, but um, yeah, I just I just love the freedom, Gary. Uh, just traveling around, seeing the sights, <laughs> taking a few photographs. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well, I look, recommend it to anybody. Oh, to, <laughs> just recommend it to anybody. So everybody stop your lives right now, buy a camper van, well not now this minute, obviously you have to wait until it's all over. So, so how has this affected you then? living in a camper van because i did see one of your videos where you said that you've been um really ac accosted by people well what happened is what happened? i were in scotland anyway um long before talk of a lockdown 
and one Sunday, I think it was, I think it was just before the lockdown. Every anybody and everybody who had a camper van that seemed to head to the, either the lakes or up to Scotland or p- places in the country to the, to the coast, and it really got the locals' backs up. Mm-hmm. And I can sort of understand that. Obviously, you know that. I think just a few days after that, the lockdown came, or it may have been just before that. So I was getting, um, I was getting warned off, should I say? So were you in? Um, where were you in Glencoe at the time? No, I was in Glenafric, and I, I was at. Right. If, do you know Glenafric? Yeah, I do it's a like bit. Yes, a, yes, yes. There's like a ten mile road uh, that's a dead end, and when you get to the end of the road, it's a there's a car park. There's no cars on the way, and I've been parked up there all week. I hadn't seen a soul. Maybe one person I talked to, okay. and um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I wasn't seeing anybody. But like I say, with all them people coming up in the camper vans on holiday, if you like, that that particular Sunday there were loads of people there, and the, the locals just didn't take kindly to it. So uh, it wasn't it wasn't a Scottish problem. You know, people were saying, oh, it's just the people around there." It, it, it's actually worldwide. I got comments on my channel. People in New Zealand, people in France, people in Spain. It, it was just an anti-camper thing. In fact, there were some uh, people who were full-time in the camper van who'd been parked up for maybe years, and they were getting threats, and they'd been parked in the same place for years. Uh, it, it was just it was just a thing against camper vans, really. It it was made particularly worse that weekend, though, wasn't it? Because it was like, if I remember rightly, it was yes. the first weekend when the whole of the UK was on lockdown. But how people took that was hey, you know, you're not allowed to go to work anymore. Well, that's brilliant because now we can put the family and the kids in the car yeah, and, and drive what... to Whitby or drive to the Lake District or drive to wherever. And, of course, then there was a massive backlash, wasn't it, from the press and everything? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, apparently the press, um, so I, I didn't read any of the press. I heard it, but apparently they really whipped, it up, uh, whipped up a bit of a storm as well. So. So what's it like then? What's it like living in a camper van? Actually, live, it's, it's my dream, by the way. When I retire, what I've always said is I just want to retire by a camper van and then every other week. I'd still base myself from home, but certainly in my mindset at this present moment in time, it's like a dream thing to do, to own a camper van and then just go off for a week or for two weeks or for four weeks or whatever. It's absolutely brilliant. I think the word that springs to mind, Gary, as soon as I got it, is freedom. You just got that freedom to go where you want and do what you want. <laughs> right, okay. Well, don't move, don't move. Uh, this will be a bit awkward for you because I'm going to play something now to everybody on YouTube, but you won't know what I'm playing. So do me a favor, just bear in mind, just, just hang fire for 30 seconds. Stay there, right? You. I don't think you can hear anything, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But I've made a little video that I'm going to play for everybody, right? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'll, I'll explain to you what the video can, um, entails. If I can yep. just get this right, I'll play, I'll let you know what the video entails in a second. <laughs> One second, hang on. Okay. Da, 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 da. Right, okay. Nev's video. Health. Right, so one second. I need to go full screen. I need to go full screen for everybody out there so they can see it as well. And all this is low res, by the way, because I've lifted this from YouTube. So Nev, literally 30 seconds, hang fire, my friend. Hang fire. Hell fire, she looks like she's been in a fight with another camper van. Well, morning. It seems like that main road's clear. I've seen a few trucks go past, but I can't go anywhere at the moment because my windows are absolutely frozen up. So um, there's a gypsy character wandering around somewhere, uh, scraping them for money. Is he? Yeah, would you do mine? Yeah, cheers. How five, much is that? Fiver, please. Yes, I need this. Thanks. See you later. On your bike. A fiver for that? You haven't even done a good job. So you set your alarm for five in the morning, climb up one of Scotland's Munros to get away from everybody, and who do you meet at the top of this mountain? I thought you were happy to see me. Unbelievable. Ooh, 
I think it's time to get back down and get some breakfast. <laughs> right. Nev, did you actually hear any of that? None, none, none at all. I have no idea what he just played. <laughs> you look great naked, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nev, what I did, I put together just a little clip that, um, uh, a little video that you made or an excerpt from the video that you made when you met up or accidentally met up with Thomas Heaton. Um, where uh, some some gypsy fella, to use your words, and not oh, mine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was absolute genius, genius. Whose idea was that? Well, um, the story goes. I, I met Thomas the day before. Yeah, um, I, I knew him. I, I met him before him. I knew him, and um, he was saying we were going up this mountain in the morning. Would I like to go? So I thought, yeah, sound. So we went up. Had a fantastic morning uh, photography. And then when we got back down about nine o'clock, uh, there'd been a big mist, and we were actually in his car, and his windows had, like, really frosted up, and he, he bombed off to get a scraper from somebody. Right. And when he came back, he started scraping it with his own windows. Right. And I just got, I, I just got my phone out quick as a flash. I thought, oh, this, this could be interesting. <laughs> so I videoed it. And then when we went back to Glencoe Mountain Ski Resort, so obviously I had to put it to, I said, look, he's, he's he saw me videoing him, and uh, I said, I've got this idea, what, what do you think? And it, it was absolutely brilliant. He says, oh yeah, what coat are I using? I'll, I'll make sure I've got the same coat on for continuity. <laughs> Came back to Casper and we just did it in one take, and I, and I just cut it together, so. <laughs> when, you, when, when, you see, it, <laughs> when you see did it in one take, all you had to do was scrape the, uh, the ice off your windscreen. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I must admit, to be fair to who, you know, for you for coming up with the idea, but more importantly for Thomas to actually go going along with that as well, because clearly he didn't need to. But that was that was genius. I thought it was genius. Yeah, real spot. It was really good of him. Yeah, fantastic. Um, okay, right. Neff, listen. How many miles a year, roughly, do you do in your camper van? Oh, um, last year I think I did pushing twenty thousand. Wow! Yeah, about twenty thousand. When I first got it, I'd do maybe between five and ten. Okay. Uh, last year, I did, I did probably, probably did the most I've ever done it in the year. Oh no! I once drove to Seville in it. That year, I did quite a lot of miles. I was going to ask: Seville Do you actually, do you actually go abroad with it as well, or is it just mainly in the UK? Not, not for a while, Gary. But I, I used to go to France quite a lot. I've been to France quite a few times, and mm -hmm. Spain a couple of times. Um, but, uh, and when all this is done, when all this is over and done with, where are you going? Where's your number one place? Where, sorry? Scandinavia. 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 I've always, I've always want to go to Norway and Sweden. And before I even took up photography, I'd, I'd like to go up there. Right. But um, yeah, if I get half a chance, that's where I'd like to go. I'll have to do some work on the vehicle first because make sure it's sort of. It's sound as a pound. Really, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, Scandinavia. I'd love to go. I'll see the Northern Lights and just travel around Northern Sweden. Um, so be back end of winter, you know. Before we look at your pictures, then, because uh, I know you've sent me five pictures for us to look at as well, um, um, I'll, I'll make sure I leave all of Nev's social stuff down below as well. His YouTube channel, go back and look at his videos because he's such a character, such a characterful person. But he's got a fantastic. Um, um, Instagram account as well, an Instagram account that deserves. I'm not blowing smoke up your backside, but an Instagram account that deserves way, way more subscribers because you've got some astonishing pictures on there. I must admit, some fantastic pictures. Uh, the checks with the post, thank you. <laughs> My doing is all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you got any um, any any funny stories about being on the road full time, or any horror stories? Anything you want to share with anybody? Because I'm sure people have. Loads of questions. Uh, got some. Uh, well, I was the, <laughs> the worst horror story, apart from when the, the windows blew off up in Glencore, was um, I actually got broke into at night while I was in bed in France once. And. Uh, Did you wake up? I, well, to be honest, yeah, I woke up because the cab light came on, so I knew the doors were open, and I've got like a few. Deterrent, shall I say, at the side of my bed. And, um, <laughs> a few deterrents. <laughs> yeah. Adrenaline, adrenaline's going, and I shouted out, and, and they went, went off, and there were three big lads running away, and if they got in, could have been in a bit of, bit of trouble, you know, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit scary. Oh, well. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, it's I mean, I... 
14 years, it's only happened once, so it's not it's not too bad, really. Yeah, it is always strange, though, when you're even, even me when I'm out in the van, if you're sleeping somewhere remote, you pretty much sleep with like one eye open. I know it sounds a bit daft, but you are sleeping very lightly, aren't you? You are kind of on edge. You know, a little bit, but you do get you do get used to that. In fact, to be honest, Gary, it's when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you, you get more relaxed there. It's when you're on edge of, edge of towns and stuff like that. Uh, the, the golden rule is if you do get a camper van, don't park where there's rubbish. Um, you know, in a layby at the side of the road because people are probably using it for nighttime activities. If you know what I mean. So, and that and that particular time, I broke that rule. I'd actually I was knackered, so I was tired out, and I just parked where there were a load of rubbish, and I got what I deserved really. I knew I've seen you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right, Nev, listen, yeah. before um, you disappear, let's have a quick look at some of your pictures. I asked you to send me um, five pictures um, that mean a lot to you or five of your favourite pictures from this year. So let's have a quick look. And I'm going to open these up. Now, you can't actually see this, so I'll explain to everybody what we're looking at. Let's go desktop so everybody can see what we're looking at. So looking at a bird of prey with obviously a kill, that's a cracking yeah, the shot. Reason I put, the reason I put... Oh, sorry. Go Do you, you want me to ex explain the reasoning behind that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the reason I put that in, because I'm not a wildlife photographer, but I think like most landscape photographers, I'm sure they all have a love of wildlife anyway. Mm -hmm. And I just pulled up in Glen Ridden this particular night. Not, you know, I just, just basically pulled up for the weekend. And I saw this um, sparrow hawk attack this pigeon that were on the ground and drag it into these bushes. And it took me half an hour crawling on my belly to get close to it. And I actually got within four feet of that bird. And it, it just carried on feeding. It was just unbelievable. Never seen anything like that in my life. I, I just thought I'd, you know, I let it have a chance to get a good feed. And then just slowly, slowly edge my way towards it. it was absolutely brilliant to see. Yeah, I think it's... Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit scary. Uh, when I spoke to Gooch about, you know, what happens when you photograph a kill and stuff like that and uh, I suppose at the end of the day you just have to remember it's nature, isn't it? But uh yeah, it's yeah, a bit yeah. it's a bit scary. But yeah, I was quite surprised when I saw that picture of yours actually because I only know you as a landscape photographer. So this is good. I'm seeing a different side of you now, which is brilliant. That's cool. It's a cracking picture as well, by the way. Thank you, got it. Good, good picture. Next picture we're looking at is, I believe, the picture you took while you were with Thomas Heaton when you climbed one of the Munros at oh, Glencoe. Yes. Right, yeah. And that's well, a cracking, cracking picture. We were very lucky because when we got up, um, that, it's a struga that it's called, you know, the patterns in the snow. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's quite a popular walk up there. There were a lot of hikers coming up as we were going back down. So... If we'd have gone up the day after, that, that, there were no fresh snow and that would have all been footprints there. So we were very lucky that it was fresh snow when we got up there. So Yeah, that is a, so. I must admit, that, that's a cracking, cracking picture. Um, I remember watching uh, Thomas's video thinking, oh my God, how, not lucky because you make your own luck, of course. You know, there's nothing lucky about being in the right place at the right time but oh my god i remember seeing it thinking you know even when like um you were talking to camera on your your video and when thomas was talking to camera you look you're just looking thinking oh my god just look over your shoulder <laughs> it's just wow so yeah i'm blown away by that it's a cracking picture really nice yeah, next one uh, you got a black and white of uh seaside some uh birds in there let's get my mouse out of the way some birds in there and some water crashing what looks to be like a, a a second exposure or something. You've got, you know, the white waves that, crashing. Yeah, that that was in Dingle um, last year. I absolutely loved it over there. Um, and we do a storm, so I sort of had a, a shot in mind. And I'm no Photoshop wizard at all, so, but I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to have to learn. So I took the shot with a, a slight movement of the waves, and then I used to use a faster shutter speed catching the birds and then paint them in in Photoshop afterwards. So it's two shots from the same, yep. but, but but different you know, sort of settings for yeah. the photograph, if you like. Yeah, I've got that, but that's that's a cracking, cracking shot. And like I say, there's a lot of thought that's gone into that. And I like that. That's really, really nice. What shutter speed? Can you remember the shutter speed you used for the crashing waves? Was it a second? Can you remember? No, I think it, it was something like a quarter of a second, but I'm... I, I couldn't be absolutely sure about that. I think it was about a quarter of a second. Either way, I love that shot. You've captured that mood fantastically well. Uh, let's move on to another one. Another one now is a snow scene. 
quite minimalistic. You've got a, a water puddle as a foreground interest with just some um, three or four, four, four or five trees in the background. Great, great shot. Yeah, that, that was one of the last photographs I've taken actually before um, I left. That was from Glen Affric on this last trip. Yeah. And it had been snowing up, so blizzard. It was really coming down heavy. And then I found this sort of gathering of water, if you like. I didn't, when I first got the composition, I didn't, the mountain at the background that you can see on the left and top left, uh, that wasn't even visible. I was just trying to get the trees and the water. And then the snow cloud moved to the right and just, you, you could, the mountain became visible. And then the soft diffused light just hit the mountain and the snow in front of me. I thought, oh, this is just beautiful. Yeah. And I just took the shot and that was it. Yeah, I loved it. I love that shot. Yeah, I love that. That is a cracking, cracking shot. That's fantastic. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Love that. So where are you living now then? What's the situation now? Where are you actually, I mean, you're not still in Scotland, are you? No, no, I came, I came back down from, after I had the trouble, I came back down. Um, there were talk of being roadblocks in North Yorkshire, so I thought, I'm going to get stuck here, and they're going to send me back to Scotland for like a yo-yo. <laughs> Be careful how you say that, by the but, way. I'm going to get sent yeah, back to Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> like like oh, as if it's a, like a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> I'd have loved to have stayed in Scotland, absolutely. But um, as I was coming back down, an old skydiving, I used to do a lot of skydiving, and an old skydiving mate got in touch with me. Yeah. And he reminded me, when I was in Florida jumping once, it was no, no jumping, it was too windy. Yeah. And one of the guys, if you were in, in trouble anywhere in the world, where would you go? And everybody to a man says, drop zone. And that just reminded me that, right, I'll go to the drop zone. And this is where I am in Lincolnshire now. And... Uh, I'm very lucky. I'm plugged in. The showers, the toilet block. It's like being on a, a caravan park. To be honest, it's absolutely brilliant considering the circumstances. Why is it called? Um, why yeah. is it called a drop zone? Is that is that just is that skydiver terminology for that area, or is that? Yeah, it's just where, where they drop you out of the plane on, uh, in, on onto the drop zone. Yeah, so that's just what they, what they call it, guys. Cool. Let me just ask you one more question then, Nev, if you don't mind, please. When you're out and about on the road and stuff like that, how, how do you manage about, um, you know, Wi-Fi and uh, do you just use 4G on your phone and that's it? I do, but a lot of places I go, like in the lakes in Scotland, you don't get a signal, um, which is okay. You know, hmm. you, every now and again, you have to go get your shopping or whatever, so you can catch up with emails and messages and ring, ring friends and family and stuff. So how but do like you... How do you manage about uploading videos to YouTube then? Uh, the same. I'll, I'll record the video obviously on site and then try and put them together at, at night. And then the next time I'm in a decent area, I'll try and upload them from there. Just park up for an hour, whatever it takes. Just okay. To upload the video. Cool. It's a bit of a nightmare that is sometimes because you'll start sending a video and then it'll just crash and because you haven't got a good enough sync and then you have to go somewhere else and try it again. So that part of that part of making YouTube videos when you're traveling it is, it is quite difficult. Okay, um, excellent. Um, just very quickly before you disappear again, I keep saying before you disappear, um, I've got Murray from Scotland's Mountains on. Hopefully, just say yes, you do follow him because we all follow Murray from Scotland's Mountains. Absolutely, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, um, great shot of the wee buckle. He's put. He's even written it in Scottish. You can't believe it. That's what he said. So <laughs> that's great praise indeed. Or great praise indeed. Sorry, from a, a, another fantastic Thank photographer. You so I said that again, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking cheers, over him. Mate. He's saying cheers, mate. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, question: Ask Nev about Windermere. Mark Kellett. I don't know why. Is there something special about Windermere? Question: Ask Nev about Windermere. I'm getting nothing back. I don't, I don't know what it means. All right, okay. So there's not a funny story that I'm supposed to know about with you in Windermere then. I don't know. I was just yeah. reading the comments and it was just there. I can't, I can't remember anything else from here, I'm afraid, Gary. No. <laughs> right, I'm saying no more than that. That just in case it's rude. I'm saying no more than that. <laughs> like I say, that is quite literally just a question that I had, uh, that, I'm, that just appeared in the um, um, uh, chat box on the right hand side. Right, okay. Nev, it's been fantastic speaking with you, my good friend. Um, Thank you for that. Stay safe, stay home. Like I say, everybody, if you've not checked out Nev, he's a real characterful person and a fantastic photographer. Check his YouTube channel out, but please check his Instagram because he needs more love on his Instagram channel because his work is exceptional. How's that, mate? Very kind. Thank you. 
Look very kind, mate. Like I said, the check's in the post. <laughs> All right. Listen, Nev, you take care, mate, and I'll speak to you again. All right. And you take care, Gary. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Right, he's now gone, so you're now back with me. So let's have a quick look. Remember, I've got Alan. I'm going to bring Alan out as well. He is uh, an astrophotographer. I think on his website or YouTube, it's called a landscape astrophotographer. But anyway, I'll speak to him in a second. So just before I fetch him, um, what else have I got to mention? I'm going to leave you all hanging on now. I might give you, I'll give you the answers. No, I won't. I'll leave the answers until after I've spoken to Alan. Look at this. Let me throw this at you. How sad is this? Please don't comment on this because this is really, really sad. But let me bring this up anyway. I have so many things open. Um, one second. Where is it? Show for Instagram. Oh, I thought I saved it. Maybe I didn't. Just one second, guys. Just pop this up here. WordPad. Pop this in here highlight it and let's increase that text All right let me it's not very exciting to look at but let's have a look at this this is an email i received this week all right sent to my personal email address now obviously it's spam and we know it's spam but don't you think it's really sad how people are trying to profit from these sad times bear in mind it's not sad times because none of us are working this is what Mally got, um, he got choked up a bit on on the podcast uh, last night when I watched it and I really felt for Mally and I felt every word he was saying. But this is why I wanted to bring this up today because it's spam and it's rubbish and no one's ever going to fall for this. But don't you think it's really sad how this pandemic is throughout the world but people are clearly trying to profit from it. How sad is that? Hello, my name is Elizabeth, and I am a representative, representative, a small team of a developers. Okay, so we pretty much know who's written this. Due to the proliferation coronavirus, we are uh, developed a desktop version of World Map with a with Foki of Outbreak. Anyway, right. <laughs> they want to pay me a hundred dollars so that I can advertise their app or something. I'm not even going to read any more than that because it's just pathetic. Now, obviously, where the scam lies there is, I'll agree to that. I get really excited because I'm going to make $100. And of course, they'll ask for my bank account details. And then before you know it, they're spamming me that way. There's no money ever going to be passed to me. I'll probably have to pay them $20 as an admin fee or something. That's how they make the money. But I just thought I'd share that with you. I just think it's really, really sad how under these really horrid times we find ourselves in right now where people are actually dying it's not bad for me because i'm stuck at home yes that's bad but that's a different kind of bad but i just think it's putrid and vile that these people were trying to profit from you know these sad times um i have made a note on there by the way of of certain things that's been inflated price wise because of the coronavirus in supermarkets and stuff. I'm not going to cover that because I, I like to think about the positives, but it's amazing how many people are actually trying to profit from the coronavirus, which is really, really, really quite sad. Right, so I'm going to bring you the, um, um, the, the answers to the questions after I've spoken to Alan. I'm going to get Alan on as well. Let me just chuck something at you. Uh, somebody brought it to my attention. I'm going to do a video on this, by the way. Affinity Photo, if anybody's used Affinity Photo, they have got a 90-day free trial on. So basically, because they, they're aware there's, uh, they're in an opportunity to, to get people to try their software out, they're now offering a three-month free trial. And you can buy it outright right now for $23.99. It's not sponsored. Don't think it's sponsored by, you know, in any way, shape or form. I'm not going to give you a link to go and, you know, where you can go and download it. They haven't asked me to uh, mention it. It's just somebody mentioned it to me, so I thought I passed on to you. So if you fancy that, go onto their website and have a look at it. And uh, how good it is, I don't know. I'm going to do a video on that. Right. Okay. Let's very quickly... Um Okay, very sad, Gary. Very, yeah, that's from Mally. How do you, my good friend, by the way? Really apologize. If you missed the uh, the start of the show, Mally, I've given your guys another shout out and I've correctly named the YouTube channel or what you guys do because I, I got it wrong last week. 
Right, okay. So without further ado, because it's amazing how quick time flies by, let's go and grab Alan. All right. Alan. Gary, I can't hear you, mate. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, is there any way you can hear me? Because clearly I'm, I'm going out. Can you turn the volume up or something, mate? Gary, I can't hear you, mate. Oh, no. What happens when it's live and somebody can't hear? Um, just one sec, one sec, one sec. Um, this could be interesting. Tony. Yes, mate. Tony, you're back live again. Um, I've put Alan back in the green room. He says he can't hear me. Have you guys been speaking to him? We have, yes. He's having issues with Nev as well. He can't hear Nev, but he can hear me and Gary for some reason. Oh, right. That's really strange if he can't hear me because can he hear you? Yes, yes. He can, he can hear me and Gary and we can talk to him, but he can't hear Nev. Do me a favour then, if I put you back in the green room, just ask him to right, right mouse click on my name and just... I've done it, I've done it. I've already done it. Check the volume, check the mute, I've done it. And he still can't hear me? No. Oh, well, this is going to be I fun can... then. <laughs> if, if, if he leaves, I can invite him again. Did send him an invite out and see if he re-enters again. Do you want to try that? Yeah, just ask him to do that, mate, if you don't mind, please. All right, and then I'll uh, I'll try and drag him back in. If not, then I'll I'll just do something else. I've got something else lined up anyway, just in case, but um, I haven't really. I'll just make it up as I go along. Tony, I'll throw you back in the room, mate, okay? That's cool. <laughs> what happens when you do a live show? Right, just while they're doing that then, let me, um, let me fill by saying hello to people uh, in the comment section but i've got something else that i i can throw at you guys anyway so even if we can't get alan back i can still so throw show some of his pictures and have a little chat but it's a shame because when we tried it earlier he he was able to speak to me no problem at all because obviously we've done some tests beforehand and it was perfectly fine what software are you using these uh using for these calls gary that's what Jim is actually mentioned. Um, Jim, I'm using a program called Discord. It's an online um, piece of software. Sorted, drag Alan back. Okay, well, I'll ask, answer that question. We use Discord, so I can... You, it may seem a bit strange to you, but when you go live using YouTube, it's really, really, really complicated. Really, you'd think by now in 2020, something like this would be simple, especially because YouTube are trying to encourage more people to go live. But when you go live, you've got to go live using a third party bit of software. You can't just go live with YouTube. But the third party bit of software then has control over certain things. So I can't just ask somebody to ring up by using their phone and I can't FaceTime them and I can only use one form of video streaming, which is why I get them on air so that they sound like they're ringing in into a radio show. So unfortunately, it's really a lot more complicated. It comes across like I'm the dunce, but trust me, it's not like that at all. If I was interviewing him during the week and then just recording his local video and recording my local video like I did with Gooch, then that's a lot easier. I can combine it, put it together, then upload it to YouTube. That's obviously a lot easier. Um, but when you try and do it live like this, there's a lot of control that's beyond your control. I think I said that right. Anyway, let me just try Alan again, one second. Alan. Gary. Oh, you can hear me now. I can hear you, mate. <laughs> How are you, my good friend? How are those, you? Uh, I reckon it was those Starlink satellites getting in the way of our connection. Mate. <laughs> well, I'm just going to come on to that, actually. So for anybody, if they didn't know, this is um, Alan. Um, and Alan Wallace is, uh, you call yourself a landscape astrophotographer. Is that right? That is right. Is that is, is that no? Forgive me for for sounding dumb. Is that landscape stroke astrophotographer? Um, well, it's basically landscape photography, but done at night, basically. So. Oh, so you've given your own, given yourself a tag. <laughs> yeah, in some respects. I, I love that. Fantastic. Um, you've got a fantastic YouTube channel. Um. And the reason yeah. why um, Alan, Alan and I uh, are talking now is, well, twofold. One is because my good pal Gareth Danks talks about you all the time. So he's a massive yeah, 
He's a massive fan of yours. I'm a massive fan of yours as well. Anyway, a fellow Welshman. Um, but also because I created a video called How to Photograph the Moon. And you know when somebody tries to give you a real bollocking, but they do it in such a nice and polite way? Well, that's exactly what Alan did to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, he says he wasn't giving me a bollocking, but he was. It was to do with the pink moon. And... Um, I rather flippantly said, oh, obviously the moon's going to turn pink because it's a pink moon, which is a bit strange because they call it a blood red moon when the moon turns red. Is that right? Yeah. So it's strange how they yeah. call it a pink moon. I understand why now, by the way, so don't don't, don't, don't correct well, me on that now. blue moons as well. Don't get into those. <laughs> yeah, we all know about the blue moons. Um, yeah, so Alan <laughs> very politely corrected me, but in ever such a nice way. But you know when there's an underlying tone? <laughs> <laughs> when I spoke to him earlier, he said, well, no, no, no. I, do you know what? I, I don't blame anyone. It's, um, I mean, we, we, we've all grown up in light polluted areas now, so we've lost that connection to the night sky. But it's the media. I blame the media, mate, because they really go to town on these things to try and get clicks, you know? big giant pink moon in the sky or the like rare event that doesn't happen for another 500 years or meteor showers going to rain down on the sky and they, they really go to town on these events and exaggerate the hell out of them and i did actually say in my video that obviously the sky that the, the, the moon didn't turn pink um i said but i'd be interested to find out how many videos there are or how many pictures sorry there are on instagram the following day right that um that, your that audio's will... cutting out gary Oh, how many videos there are the following day that will also be pink? Uh, how many pictures on Instagram mm -hmm. will also be pink? But I posted mine and it's had over 2,000 likes. And I put a little bit of a pink tinge on mine, which is really wrong. But I'm just having a laugh. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. So I got told off. No, by that'll Alan. really give you the bollock in me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. That's what we want. Um in case you guys didn't know, and I'll be honest, I didn't know either, but you've been featured on the BBC. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of work with the BBC, actually. I've done um, um, a few uh, documentaries with uh, BBC Natural History Unit, one with BBC Earth as well. And then I did my own documentary with, um, with BBC Wales called Moonshot. Seen it? I've seen it. I've got it written down here. Moonshot. I've got the URL. What I'll do? It's it's just a, is it like a two minute video? Is it like a BBC short? Oh uh, yeah, the full the full episode is not on um, on uh, on iPlayer anymore. But it, it was a, it, it's a thirty minute documentary that was celebrating the um, the moon landings fifty years ago, the fiftieth anniversary, and we were uncovering links between whales and the moon and. They wanted me to capture an image, a perfect image of the moon, to celebrate the lunar landings. Okay, let me see if I've got I've got a picture of it somewhere because I want to I want to put a picture up as well. Let's just do that so people know who we're talking about. That's Alan, by the way. So I've now put you on the screen so people can see exactly who you are. They're looking at a picture of you, your Insta not your Instagram, but your um, uh, YouTube page. Basically, it's just a little picture I created earlier on today. Um, let me ask you about, because I only saw the two minutes of it, because if you go on uh, BBC iPlayer, there's like a two minute short on there. So that's still on there, Alan. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. But at the yeah, end... Yeah, I think the, the trailer is still on there, yeah. Ah, right. Okay, so that's the trailer. Okay, right. Forgive me. But at the end, you showed a picture that I'm guessing that's your picture. You've created that, a little video of... What was that? What? Well, that Do... is... Um... That that's basically the, the the eagle, which was the the module that landed on the moon. Mm -hmm. So if you ever hear the phrase "the eagle has landed," yeah, that comes from the Apollo Eleven mission when they they landed on the moon. So when the BBC asked me, "Can you take a photograph to celebrate the moon landings?" That was my idea. We basically built a replica of the eagle lander in my back garden, and then we carried it to the top of a mountain in Wales, um, and constructed it up there. <laughs> And then I, I walked about two and a half kilometers away from the mountain and took a video of my friend Sarah basically climbing out of this fake spaceship, um, <laughs> pretending to be an astronaut, and she's picking up rocks from the floor as if she's collecting moon samples. And then she gets back on the, on the spaceship. And, and whilst all this is going on, there's a big, giant moon 
is the backdrop I'm shooting on. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a six six hundred mil lens with a two times extender. Yeah. So shooting at twelve hundred mil, you got this big giant full moon rising behind this scenario that's going on. It was so much fun. Really tense, but it was so much fun. Oh my god! I mean, to organise that, to know exactly where the moonrise was going to be, obviously then getting obviously god lucky with the weather. So you built that lunar module oh, yeah. then? Oh, we made it. I made it. I bought a lot of stuff from a DIY store. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it's like um, it's basically <clears throat> um, a um, plasterer's ladder. Loads of bath cladding cut to shape and stuck on the front using the giant mast. <laughs> yeah, and we sort of constructed on top of the mountain. It was windy as hell, so we had to get loads of ropes to guy it down like a tent just yeah. to make sure it didn't fall over. Yeah. Oh, it was so much fun. It was absolutely brilliant. Because like I said, because on the video, you just see a very small excerpt of the video. Obviously, that's the end of the film, I'm yeah. guessing, with that girl take, walking down the steps. Obviously, I thought at the time it was you. Um, but... I, I, I thought instantly, oh my God, that is so much that's gone into that. So much. <laughs> well, look, I'll, I'll yeah, leave, I'll, cross there's a lot on. of planning. There's a lot of planning. And obviously when you're, when you're working with the BBC and a film crew, um, there's a lot more that comes to it. You've got to have a film crew ready on the day. You've got to have all the planning permission, permission from the, the National Park Authority. You've got to pray for the weather like normally i react to the weather but when you've got to plan all this stuff you've just got to pick a date and hope for the best so it was insanely lucky to get clear skies on the day of the full moon as well and the uh yeah and and yeah i can imagine the pre the pressure i'm gonna say sort it ignore all right um yeah it's pretty pretty intense i imagine trying to organize all that pretty intense <laughs> But but brilliant, and I'll leave I'll leave the link down below so the guys can at least watch um, um, how you call, how that was made or the trailer for it because it's brilliant. But look, just give us. Do you know what? I've got a link for Vimeo. The the full documentary is on Vimeo. I'll give you the link, yeah. um, and there's a password for the file as well. The BBC will be livid if they find out, but <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> Are you giving me that so I can put it on my YouTube or just for me? Um, yeah, just chuck it up, mate. They'll never know. <laughs> They'll never know. It's just somebody's it's a work for the BBC. Um, where, what are you um, going to do? Sue me. <laughs> where is the best? Let's, let's stick with the UK. Where is the best place? Anybody who's into or wants to get into astrophotography. Let's talk about the equipment that you need. Can you get away with basic equipment? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, you need four things, basically. There's four essentials. You need... A camera, fast wide angle lens, tripod, and a head torch. All right, okay. That's basically all you need. So a nice wide angle lens. Are you talking about? Um, you talking about twenty four mil? You talking about twelve mil? How wide angle do you need? The wider the better. Um, so mm, it, it depends what you're shooting. Obviously, for the Milky Way, nice and wide, or for the Aurora, nice and wide, but. It's, punching in a little bit it's not the end of the world so basically i shoot mainly most of my shots are between 14 and 24 mil mm -hmm. and then i occasionally pull out a 35 mil or a 50 mil mm -hmm. sometimes a 135 mil and so so basically you can go out and take an interest and in, can you shoot the milky way with really entry-level equipment in your opinion i mean i i, I did a presentation on my facebook live the other day and i used images in that presentation that i took when i first started using a canon 100d which is a very entry-level dslr it's like mm. the smallest dslr I've ever made um and a basic tokina lens the tokina 11 to 16 millimeter lens yeah and like that i was using images in this presentation that was taken with that entry-level setup the people watching the presentation wouldn't have a clue what I, what i used to take that image Fantastic. Like I say, nowadays, you know, the, the, the power of the, the raw file is so fantastic. Um, you know, with just a little bit of knowledge in Photoshop and you can really punch it. And Oh, that's cool to know, though. So there's no excuse for anybody not really wanting to go out and take pictures. Absolutely. No, I mean, especially landscape photographers, because I mean, you've probably already got everything you need. Yeah. You get started. So. All right. OK. So what about if money was no object? What's the best equipment? Lost, I lost you, Anne. Oh, no. 
Can you hear me now? I don't yeah. know why. I'm not moving, so you should be able to hear me all right. Uh, Alan, can you hear me all right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. If money was no object, what's the, the best equipment? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no, I mean, <laughs> in terms of cameras, there's no... I wouldn't say there's no standout option that's the best. So, like, the main... To be honest, the, the, the best camera is a, is a modern full-frame camera. You want a nice big sensor. Yep. Um, it's like Canon have got the EOS R now. Nikon have got the Z6, is it? I think is, the, is it the Z7 that's their flagship. And Sony have got the A7 III and the A7S II. They're, they're all just on par. There's no real standout option, to be honest. It's just what you're used to using, what you enjoy using. They've all got their pros and cons. So, um, but in terms of lenses, I think the the, the Sony twenty four millimeter f one point four G Master lens is the best lens ever made for landscape astrophotography. Really, it's phenomenal, mate. I mean, it, it opens up. It's 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 one of the only lenses I have ever used that is usable at f one point four. Wow. Well, that's that's accolade. most of the time. I, it's incredible. I mean, most of the time I buy lenses that are 1.4, 1.8, but I'll step them down to f 2.8 as you get better performance, better sharpness, less coma in the corners, and chromatic aberration. Sure. Um, but the Sony 24mm G Master is pretty, pretty phenomenal. And it's small, lightweight, takes normal filters, has autofocus, a de clicked aperture. But a hefty price tag. It's definitely worth the price tag. Okay, cool. Let's talk about, um, I will only talk about this very briefly, because um, I know clearly from your video that you're not keen on Mr. Tesla at the moment. What's, what's, the, situ <laughs> what's the situation with that then? Obviously, because for us, bear in mind, you know, we, we stand outside in the garden and we see, you know, the Starlink coming across with it 15 or 16 or however many there is. And it looks quite impressive. But then you think, hang on a minute, you know, there's going to be, what, 30 odd thousand of them up there. <laughs> how, um, how will that nobody affect? Nobody really knows how many are going up. He's got permission for 12,000 and it's probably going to be at least 12,000. He's trying to apply for 30,000 more, which would bring the total to about 40,000. Um, but nobody really knows how many they're actually going to need. But if it continues as it is, um, the, the entire night sky is going to be covered in a mesh of satellites, basically, which will ruin ground-based astronomy for the entire world. It will ruin astrophotography. Um, it'll make things very difficult for us astrophotographers. Um, so, yeah, yeah. He's upset. It's not a good tell. situation. <laughs> Alan, you... Um... Oh, it is. It's... Go on. Uh, but, I mean, it, it, they are looking into ways to to prevent the devastating impact. So they tried painting one of the black. didn't really work. It only reduced the brightness by about 40%, which wasn't enough. Um, so in the, it's not the next launch, but the ninth Starlink launch. Um, so not the next launch, but the launch after that. All of the satellites are going to have sun shades. They basically got these automatic umbrellas that fold out, and block the satellites from reflecting the sun back to Earth. Right. And hopefully, if that works, if that works, then he can launch as many as he wants. So <laughs> don't care. Yeah. But if yeah. it doesn't work, we're, we're in trouble, basically. Yeah, that would do it. I mean, because and they they're about. Five hundred and fifty miles or kilometers up, when eventually they reach their um, orbiting height. Is I think correct? at the moment they've only launched into three hundred, the uh, three hundred and forty miles mm -hmm. in altitude. Three hundred and forty miles. Some of them eventually will go up to five hundred, um, but I think they've changed plans. I think they're going to put them all at three hundred and forty miles. Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? Okay, let's very quickly let's 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 lighten the load a bit then, because clearly you were, um, yeah, you you on your last video you were obviously very uh, um, emotional about the fact that they're up there, and you know even I was looking, thinking, you know, how can you now start taking star shots, you know, w with that going on? But I mean, yeah, okay, uh, let's just see how that develops. Um, a fantastic video of yours I watched, two thousand and twenty, unmissable night sky events 
I'll leave mm. the link down to that video um, again in the notes section of this video. I want you guys to go and check that out. What's the most exciting thing you're looking forward to this year? This year, fucking nothing if this pandemic carries on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just assume it. Stuck in my back garden. Um, Is there anything exciting happening that where, where, where it's so good that you have planned to go abroad, for instance, because it might be a better view of an asteroid belt or something? I don't really know. You can tell I don't really know. Yeah, I think this year probably the highlight will be um probably the, the gemini's meteor shower okay and when's that happening that's not until december that's in december right at the end of the year so fingers crossed we might be out of our houses by then <laughs> yeah hopefully I, I think we'll definitely be out of our houses by then i think whether we can go abroad is a different story but it'll be a good year for the gemini's um where you, you can it's one of the ones that is um how you'd expect a meteor shower to be there's about 100 to 120 an hour to a dark location sure sure so you, you, you're seeing one or two meteor every minute okay whereas some other meteor showers you can sit outside for hours and only see one or two you know? <laughs> when we were talking about the picture earlier on that you created for the bbc obviously there's a video attached to this guys i'm just talking to the people in youtube world right now i've actually put on the screen you can't see this alan but i've i've blown up a picture from your instagram account that's the picture of the um, the person stood next to, obviously, the space capsule that you created uh, from all your being qubits and pieces. <laughs> and, yeah, it looks it looks brilliant. I meant to put it up earlier on, so I was backtracking ever so slightly. The picture on the screen right now is what Alan was talking about earlier on when he did some work for the BBC. That's a great, great picture. A fantastic picture. Right, Alan, can we have a look at um, some of your favourites from the year? Yeah, absolutely. Can we do that? Right, so I'll explain to you. Let's put it on the screen now so everybody can see. I don't know if these are in any particular order, but what it is, every time I get a guest on, I like to ask them to send me four or five pictures so we can have a bit a bit of a chat. So the first one is you're literally standing um, 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 what looks like in the middle of a lake pointing up at the stars in the sky. Mm. That's a picture you Lost sent you me. Again. All right, all right. Okay, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. Apologies about this at home. Um, I heard what picture it was, though. Did you ask a question? Yeah, yeah, well, um, basically, just explain what's going on and why Why is this one of your favourite pictures and how come you're stood in um, a lake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the hair for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can get away with it, yeah. Um, no, what, what? So this, this this image was an idea I had in my head for quite a long time, actually, and it's taken at um, Schlangos Lake in the Brecon Beacons. Yeah, and there's a there's a jetty um, for the boats, so you can walk out and get on your canoe and whatever. Um, but what happens in the winter time is when it floods. Sometimes it floods and it just covers jetty. Right. So it kind of looks as if you're walking on the water, you know, you, the, the lakes are quite deep, but you can walk on the jetty. Right. Um, and as long as you've got a nice still day with no wind, you get those reflections as well. So I, I wanted to get a shot of me on this jetty when the flood water was at the perfect height. We had a nice night with no wind. Um, so yeah, there's, there's stars in the sky is the Orion constellation. So I'm sort of standing on this jetty pointing at Orion and it just almost looks as if I'm standing on water but I'm actually standing on like a little jetty that's that's flooded and a nice pair of waterproof boots are well he's essential <laughs> no no a nice pair of wet feet <laughs> <laughs> right let's go on to the next picture then and a sec uh... <laughs> let's have a look let's pop that one up there um the next one we're looking at is um, 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 those statues. What do you call those statues? Oh, the the Moy statues in in Easter Island. Yeah, that's them. That's a that's a belt. Yeah. So, so that was. Go on. Go on. Go on, mate. You, you explain the, the the picture, please. Yeah. So, so for people who don't know, that's um, 
the, the statues on Easter Island, which is a really, really, really small island um, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's, it's definitely the most in the middle of nowhere I've ever been. It was the first time in my life that I was stood on land and I was surrounded 360 degrees by sea. So I was on, on top of one of the volcanoes on this little island and you're looking around and it's nothing but sea for 360 degrees and you kind of realize that you're you're really in the middle of the nowhere sure, um, sure but this night where i was photographing the milky way with the the statues that they carve these statues out of the volcano to commemorate somebody significant in the tribe and it's a way of protecting their magic and keeping it in the community so they carve these big statues out of the volcano and transport them down to the edge of the coast but so these are sort of these ones that I photographed have just been carved and started their journey. But um, because of a civil war on the island, everything just kind of stopped. But yeah, just being around these statues, I mean, some of them were 20 meters tall. You can't quite grasp how big they are um, from the photograph, but some sure. of them are about 20 meters tall. Sure. You've got so much character, so much character. They really feel, you know, it's just a rock at the end of the day, but they really feel alive. And especially at night, being surrounded by these things. It was probably the first time in my life, I'm, I'm a very scientific guy. It was like the first time in my life I felt some sort of spirituality. Um, oh, wow. It's really, really interesting. Do you base your holidays around um, moon cycles and, and, and star Absolutely. cycles? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you, you want to joke, but I do, mate, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I think, no, I, I, I totally get that, though. I totally get that. That's your passion. You know, we're going to go on holiday, but we're going to go to this place because the moon's in this, but, you know, and it's like, and the such and such is in that <laughs> orbit. That's brilliant. I think that's an excellent picture. That's a brilliant, brilliant picture. Dude, I, my life revolves around the moon, mate. I mean, I'll get camera clubs phoning me asking, you know, can we do this date? And I'll check the, the calendar. And I'll be like, oh, it's a gibbous moon. Yeah, that's fine, guys. That's fine. I'll do that date. <laughs> but if it's on a new moon, I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, oh, it must be a nightmare for you if around about the, the, the new moon cycle, you get about four or five days of just overcast weather. That must just be a nightmare. Yeah, it's, um, I mean... I I chose my my to be an astro photographer and I live in Wales, mate. It's the most paradoxical decision I've ever made in my life, but <laughs> I, ch I chose my own fate. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I think it's brilliant. Uh, right, let's have a look at another picture. One second, gonna fire this up. Um, okay, number three. So let's have a quick look at this one. Um, let's go full screen on that so everybody can see it. Full desktop screen. So we're now looking at the landscape uh, image uh, run about 16 by 9 crop with um, what looks like um, a bit of uh, a bit of green in the background, which looks absolutely fantastic. Do you know the obviously, you know, the picture I mean, you've only sent me five. Is it the one with the salt lake and the reflection? Yeah, is that what it is? It's actually on a salt lake. Yeah, it's brilliant. And the, the Milky Way is reflected in the water. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that so that that was a Salt Lake in um, in the middle of the Atacama Desert in Chile, um, and it was a bit of a pain in the ass to get to because a lot of these places in Chile are locked down and guarded by security at night. Um, they're really protective over their tourism out there. Um, but this one's so far in the middle of nowhere, but they, they don't bother with security or anything, and you can sort of go there at night. But um, it's when I say it's in the middle of the desert, it was a 40, 45 minute drive. The drive was much longer than 40, 45 minutes, but 40 to 45 minutes of that drive was through a desert in a completely straight line. It was the most boring thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> because you're driving through the most barren thing ever it's like as far as you can see it's just dry plains straight road for 45 minutes what about i'm guessing that the green we can see in the background is, is that northern lights or is that a little bit of light pollution from somewhere yeah it's um it's a really funny color there's there's lots of mines in chile yeah um in the outback um so i don't know why they're using green lights but um, they've got some really funky colours going on in the mines, um, so it looks you know, it adds such a nice touch of colour to the image. Wow! So, so, you, so without stating the obvious, then you've purposefully 
figured out this composition before actually heading to the salt mine? Probably done that months in advance. Is that right? Um, I, I wouldn't say months in advance because it, it it wasn't until all of the plans I made for Chile were completely scrapped when we found out that all of these places were actually closed and guarded at night. Right. Um, so this was a bit of improv on the trip. We sort of found this lagoon that was in the middle of nowhere and that wasn't guarded by security. And so we, we, we kind of just went there that night and winged it, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That is such an excellent, excellent shot. Let's bring another one up one second. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Okay, let's go full screen on that one and desktop full screen so everybody can see. So you are photographing, you're stood on the hill with your camera doing a selfie. Um, do you know, I think I've seen this video. Didn't you purposefully go out to take a selfie during um, um, the moon in this state? Yeah, so that oh, that's the, um, the total eclipse image. Mm. I, yeah, that, I saw that, that video. That was it, oh god it was oh. <laughs> i tried to do too many things at once and it came all right to be honest but um yeah so that's a, that's a total solar eclipse that's when um the moon passes in front of the sun and you get a few minutes of what's called a total eclipse basically it, everything goes dark and weird and um they, they only happen once every year or two and a lot of them happen like in antarctica where you can't go or but yeah, that, that was the, the total solar eclipse last year. And that was the reason I went to Chile was was literally for that thing because I'd never photographed a total solar eclipse before. And I'm in the middle of writing a book about photographing the night sky. And, you know, I, I was I can't do this without having photographed a solar <laughs> eclipse. So we, uh, me and my friend Adrian planned this trip to go to Chile for the solar eclipse, which oh, it's so, so nerve-wracking because you planning a trip to the other side of the world that's very very expensive and very risky because if it's cloudy on the day you know you've, you've missed it and you've got to wait a few years to try again so talking about pressure but luckily we had perfect weather oh god it was i've never been so nervous in my life mate. i was biting my nails on the plane and <laughs> night before oh, honestly, i couldn't sleep the night before and I was like, oh my god like how am i gonna like I had, I think I had three cameras with me and I was like, how am I going to shoot this? And I was trying to think like which lenses I was going to use and how I was going to use all three cameras at once in this like really insane two minutes. It was the fastest two minutes of my life. <laughs> I'm um, saying nothing. <laughs> all while trying to keep myself together, maybe because it's such an, like, it's a really moving thing to experience a total solar eclipse. Sure, sure. Because you, you know, it's in the middle of the day and all of a sudden the light just disappears and you're in twilight and you can see the stars and all the animals are like what the fuck's going on and all the birds are singing their morning songs and yeah I, I it was, remember, yeah it's just such an incredible experience i watched this video and you were running back and forward weren't you trying to trying to make sure everything was right and double check treble check double yeah. check, treble check i remember doing that and it was quite an intense video to watch actually um but <laughs> <laughs> but, but but gareth's mentioned you so many times in terms of when we've had conversations uh, on the photo nerds we've talked about what could we do to improve our photography and gareth says planning it's all about planning and he gets that from you mm. watching your videos because something like this doesn't just happen it doesn't yeah. just happen the amount of plan how long did it take you to plan this picture um god i don't know i mean i was thinking about it so much but i, I took like three other pictures at the same time as that picture i mean i'm, you, I'm taking a picture of myself taking a picture <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was like to to actually pull all that off, I rehearsed it like the morning of the eclipse. Yeah, I woke up, set up all my cameras, and practiced changing the settings, running to the other camera, changing the settings, shooting, running to the other camera, and I I practiced that and rehearsed it before the actual thing. Yeah, but well done um, to you in for terms the... of planning. I mean, there's like there's two there's two. My plan is split into two different worlds. There's the landscape stuff, and then there's the night sky stuff. Yeah. So a lot of the location stuff, you can't find a good photograph in the dark. <laughs> so I can't just go out at night and take a good photo because I can't see what I'm taking a photo of. So I have to go out in the daytime, find interesting compositions, and find nice landscape scenes. And 
I'll collect those and I'll take an image, a reference image of the, the composition. Sure. Take a note of what direction it's facing. And then when it comes to the night sky stuff, I'm, I've got a good background in astronomy, so I know where the Milky Way is at a certain time of year. I know that the planets rise there and the moon rises there. So um, when I get a good bit of weather, uh, when an opportunity comes and then you get a nice weather, I look at my map of compositions I think, oh, I've got that composition there. What can I put in the night sky at this time of year and sort of combine those two worlds, basically? Well, I mean, it's got to be said, this is why there's no way on this earth I could be a uh, or a, an accomplished astrophotographer. Could I take an astro picture? Yes, of course I can. But to put that much work into it and organisational skills, I would be absolutely useless <laughs> and completely lost, seriously. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's what Gareth sings your praise an awful lot because without stating the obvious, you know, to back up Gareth's argument, yes, you cannot do what you do unless you plan it in advance. You can't. Yeah. Right. I mean, in my genre of photography, it's like the, the night sky is like clockwork, so you can plan hmm. uh, quite in a black and white fashion, let's say. But I, I do daytime landscape photography and I much prefer to go out without a plan. Sure. Um, you know, just go on a random hike and just photograph what happens and what you see and what you find. Whereas I think, uh, you know, you find a lot of people these days go to a place with a photograph in mind. Yeah. Then get disappointed when they don't get that photograph. <laughs> That's my argument. Um, so, Mr. Danks, if you're listening and watching right now, right, listen to Alan, <laughs> who you love and adore. He's now backing my argument up, and I was backing his argument up a second ago. You're absolutely right. That's what I prefer to do. I like to pin a tail on the donkey, go there, and let's just see, you know, what I can do, yeah. what I can create, and that's fantastic. I mean, they've they, they both got their pros and cons, and I think it's mm -hmm. the type of person as well. Some people love planning, and some people look love looking ahead and planning, but other people just love going out and seeing what happens. Do you know what I mean? So it's... Yeah. That's, that's why I've married who I've married, by the way, because she plans absolutely my whole life. <laughs> She even just brought me a beer up a second ago. Uh, Alan, let me bring up another picture of yeah. yours. I think it's the last one. One second. Pop that one up on there. So we're looking now at, without stating the obvious, uh, a night sky, and there's a little bit of green in the sky. What a fantastic picture. Where was that? Which one's that? Oh, when you say a little bit of green, is there a lot of green? <laughs> yes, there's a lot of green in the sky. I'm assuming you, <laughs> you've added that in post-production. <laughs> no, yeah. God no. That's like a swear word. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? That was um some absolutely stunning aurora. That's in Norway in um Senior Island. Yeah. Um yeah, it was insane. I mean the, the mountain you see there, the little peak is actually quite a popular mountain. It's called Segler, but you won't recognise it from this angle. Right. But if you put Segler into Google it's a very famous image of a mountain that's um, very uh, tall and long and sort of hangs over a little bit. I'm sure you'd recognise it if you saw it. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I, but, think, um, I think it's a fantastic picture. What an aurora that is. That is brilliant. Yeah, so me and my friend Adrian, again, were just driving to a planned location. But before we could get there, the sky just absolutely blew up. It was mm. insane. Um, so we, we had to just pull over. Um, at, the, at the roadside and and uh, make do with what we could find and what we could see and yeah it was just the entire sky was just green and erupting and flowing and folding yeah it was insane it is absolutely tremendous what uh to be fair what a fantastic set of pictures that they were so Thank let me just much. before i get rid of you um let me just see i've got to very quickly have a look at the um, um, um the comments one second uh, this is always a nervous bit now because you don't really interact with people when you mm. should do because there's so much going on. All this third-party bit of software, especially because, like, say, you and I have had a couple of technical issues as well. Um, but you also find yeah. when you now look at the comments, people are actually having a conversation with each other. But let me see if I can find any questions. I've got my eyes in. Because um, I, I don't want to drag this on because, obviously, this has been long enough. Oh, God, there's so many to go through. Questions, 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 <laughs> questions, questions. I can't. Oh... I did see questions earlier on. Um, 
Right, okay. Again, you don't know this, Alan, but when I'm now chatting with people on YouTube land, there's a 30-second delay. So if I say, right, guys, have you got any questions? Look, a question just come up now from Raymond Fitzpatrick. Did you photograph the Lyrid meteor shower? Have I said that right? I probably said it wrong. Yeah, the Lyrids. I, I did um, from my back garden. I had two or three cameras time lapse in for probably three nights, four nights over the meteor shower, and I think I caught two good meteors right. caught hundreds of bloody satellites right <laughs> um, but i caught two good meteors i probably caught more meteors but smaller ones that are insignificant let's say i caught two good meteors and that was really really disappointing to be honest ah okay cool jeff palmer uh, asked uh, so a question for alan it's, it's great when you because oh, questions are coming through now you're going to be here all, all night now you know that don't you um, Lost you. <laughs> oh can you hear me now it's a bit awkward there sorry yeah. Oh, Alan, can you hear me, mate? I can hear you. What was Jeff Palmer's question? Ah, all right, you heard that. Okay, Jeff Palmer's question. Question for Alan. Can he recommend a good dark sky area in the Brecon Beacons? Um, I mean, mo most of the Brecon Beacons is pretty good, apart from the southern, the southern part of the Brecon Beacons, because it's very close to big towns like Merthyr and Abergavenny, but it depends what direction you're facing. If you're facing north, you're fine wherever you go. If you want to face south, then stick to the northern regions of the Brecon Beacons. But you've got the Carmarthen fans. You've got Usk Reservoir is probably the darkest place in the Beacons. You've got the Clangos Lake. It's really, really nice. Um, up on the Libanus Common, it's really nice. Or Minith Troid. Minith Clangos. See, that's so nice. See, because how I would have answered that question being technically brilliant like I am, like you know I am, I would have said, look, just go there, <laughs> right? Go at night, open your eyes. If you can't see anything, you're in a dark area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, there's more questions. Okay, Jeff, hopefully that's answered your question. Uh, Andy Dean, question, difference between night sky photography and astro photography? Hmm. Night sky photography hmm. and astro, well, they're, they're the same, aren't they? I'd say they're the same, yeah. But I suppose night sky photography, you could probably include more like cityscapes and that sort of stuff, perhaps. Um, I don't know, maybe long exposures of aeroplanes. And... I don't think there's that much difference, to be honest. No, I, w I wouldn't have said there was a difference. But again, I'm no expert. Uh, you, you may know. <laughs> Question for Alan, please. Outside of astrophotography, do you have any other subjects you like to photograph? That's one. And two, what's your favourite country to do astrophotography? in um I, I do daytime landscape photography as well but i i keep that to myself these days to be honest um other than that i don't really do much shooting i'm really a bit of macros photographing spiders around the house the other day um but i think that's probably the boredom of the lockdown <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is. It comes to something. When, it comes to something when you start looking around your house for spiders to photograph, doesn't it? It comes to something. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's brilliant. <laughs> Who knows um, what's going to happen in a few just, months' time? Oh no, it's mental, isn't it? We'll all just be the, the world's best macro photographers. We will be. Uh, Mally, <laughs> Mally Davis, my very good friend, Mally Davis. Hey, where? Was, yeah, the, yeah, sorry. The other the other question was um, the, the favorite location. Mm -hmm. So I think probably Chile was my favorite country so far either that or the canary islands okay chile mm. all right okay perfect uh yeah apologize about that okay uh mally davis where is your favorite place to shoot astro oh that, that was the question yeah so i think probably um the atacama desert in chile was awesome um but i also love the canary islands like la palma and tenerife um, but then if you want to do the Northern Lights, you have to go up to Norway. So, um, in general, probably Chile. I mean, down the Southern Hemisphere, it's incredible. Um, they've got a big advantage over us in the Northern Hemisphere. Do you ever go to the North of Scotland? Isle of Skye, Not Harris, Lewis, yes, I need Hebrides. to, I really need to. No, I haven't. The weather puts me off, to be honest. <laughs> Apologies to any <laughs> Scottish people listening or watching right now. 
<laughs> it doesn't always rain. It's, we have a saying, it doesn't always rain in Scotland, but sometimes it stops. <laughs> <laughs> no, I must admit, when we, uh, mm. we, we do the Isle of Skye a lot, we go up to the Outer Hebrides, and uh, I, I say it every time we go there. If I'm up there with a workshop, the first thing I'll say is, you know, midnight, we've got to switch the lights off. You've got to come outside on a clear night, look up, and you will never see a better a better sky anywhere in the whole oh, yeah. of the UK. No, it's, it's, it's really good there. Especially because where we stay is in a really dark area, and you know you can actually see the Milky Way with the human eye, but it's it's glowing. It's not you know you have to point mm. it out. It's just glowing, and it's amazing. So even yeah, yeah. someone like myself that uh, um, I don't, I'm not saying I don't have time for astrophotography, as in I don't care for astrophotography because I love astrophotography. But even I will look up at the night sky and think, oh my god, I should be into uh, astrophotography. Mm. I've never met a person who doesn't like a, a view of the dark night sky, to be honest. All right. Well, look, let's let's do one more question because there's more questions coming through. Mally, thanks, Gary. Uh, great to hear you. Okay, right. One more question. And a lot of people will probably struggle with this because it's a question that's probably always asked. Um, somebody called The Wall. I don't know who that is. I wish they put the name on it. Um, question is, I'm struggling to focus on the stars for a clear picture. Do you need foreground to focus on? So what he's saying is, right, okay. Yeah, you can answer that if you want to. He's basically struggling to focus on the stars. What tip would you give him for that, please? Um, it, to, the, I'd be able to answer that question a lot better if he could explain what he's struggling with and what camera he was using. But the, the best way to, fo to focus on the stars is to use live view on your camera. So there's the screen on the back of the camera and make sure your settings are dialed in so your aperture is f2.8 you've got a long shutter speed because your screen will try and boost the brightness based on your settings and then aim your camera towards a bright star or a planet the brightest star or planet you can see in the sky at the time and then you use the digital zoom on the live view to zoom in onto that star or planet and manually focus until it's as small and as sharp as possibly can be if you've got a really old camera and you're struggling to find a star or a planet on the back of the LCD, you can use a very distant street light as a reference point. Yep. Um, other than that, there's a few other ways. That, that's the best way to do it, the most surefire way. Um, but if uh, there's a video on my channel called this, I think it's um, six ways how to focus how to focus on the stars. Six methods. Um, so have a little watch of that. That's it. So there you go. Basically, manual, 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 manual. L use the live view in the back of your screen and just uh, yeah, manually focus on all the rest of it. You see, now you mentioned bad weather in Scotland. Dave Murray says, never bad weather in Scotland, just bad clothing you're wearing. You see, now I'm getting grief now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pass that grief on yeah, to you. Well, I, no, no, no. I, I totally agree with that statement. But when you're an astrophotographer, there's no clothes that can help you get rid of the clouds in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so true. That's so true. Right. Okay. I'm going to have to thank you, by the way, everybody that, um, um, that they're still writing questions. There's loads of questions coming up, but otherwise this is going to drag, uh, drag on for two hours. Can I answer them in text if I, if I go onto the stream? Yeah. Yes, you can do. Um, yes, you can. By the way, if anybody tries to watch this in about half an hour's time, I always find there's a massive lag because you've got to wait for about two or three hours for YouTube to do its thing and then basically tomorrow it'll be perfectly fine. So if you start watching later on and it's a bit a bit laggy, just come back. Anyway, right. Yes, Alan, that would be great if you could go and uh, I believe you can still see this feed when it goes live. So it'd be great if you could answer some of the questions there. So if anybody has any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments box below. Um, Alan, thank you very much indeed for accepting my invitation to be my guest today. Thanks for having me, mate, and thanks for everyone for their questions as well. No, no problem at all. Um, I had born and bred up around about the Usk area when you mentioned Usk earlier on. I'm from born and bred in Cumbran myself in South Wales. Oh, lovely. I might not sound like it, but I am. Right. Alan, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's been very, very enlightening. Hopefully, you guys have got a lot from this. And like I say, I'll leave all uh, of uh, Alan's social links down below. So do me a favor, go and check them out. Go and check his YouTube channel, which is absolutely brilliant. And also go and check his Instagram as well because it's it's equally as good. There you go, mate. Thank you very much indeed. 
Thanks, Gary. I really appreciate it, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. You have a good time, mate. And uh, stay home and stay safe. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, guys. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right, mate. He's gone. Uh, right, mate. Right, mate. Right, mate. Right, mate. Lots of loving coming your way. Um, we're almost done. Before you disappear, let me bring up the answers to the questions. Let me put it on full screen. I like to do this just to have um, a bit of fun. One second. All right. Okay. Hopefully, you guys, if you see the questions on my Facebook page, let's go desktop full screen. Let's there. Okay. So I asked you the questions on my Facebook page. Um, what are these logos? Some of them are really easy. Some of them aren't quite so easy. But let's start off with the first one at the top. There's no prizes for guessing, but I'll very quickly go through these. So how many of these did you get right? Let's have a look. So the first one is the Greenpeace logo. I very much doubt anybody would get this wrong. That's Umbro. This one has stumped quite a few people. eBay. <laughs> that one. There's no way that anybody could get that wrong. Slazinger. Sprite. What about this one? How many people have got this one right? What about that one? Tesla. This one? Maybe a bit awkward if you're... No, can't even say if you're, if you're young because obviously this is still a product that's available now. Hot Wheels. I'm sure everybody has got this one. It's in the name. EA Sports. This one. Logitech. This one. This has confused an awful lot of people as well. Old Spice. Look at that. You can beat it, can you? Oh. What about that one? What about this one? How many people got that right? How many people? No lying. Goodyear. This one, Olay. And last one, um, I thought this was the hardest one out of the lot, especially if you haven't got kids. Sesame Street. How bad is that? Uh, yeah, so there's all the answers. Let's come back off that. Right, let's see where we're at now then, guys, because I want to uh, close our proceedings here. Thankfully, we did manage to speak to Nev and we did manage to speak to Alan. And like I say, it's really awkward. People are asking me what, what programs I use in the background, but you're very, very restricted with what programs you can use. I can't just ask him or ask somebody to ring the radio show. Uh, Ray, I call this a radio show. They can't just ring um, because it's just not allowed on YouTube. And also you can't just, you know, use like, you know, any old program. So I am stuck with this. But um, yeah, we muddled through it and we got through it perfectly fine. Let's go back to my show notes just to make sure. Um, okay, video of the week. Let's give you my video of the week. Where is it? It's on here somewhere. I have been watching Ozark all week, but that's not my, it's not my YouTube video of the week. And my YouTube video of the week is a real weird one. Doopy doo doo, dooby dooby doo doo doo. And if I can't find it on here. I might save it for next week. Next week, next week, next week. Okay, right. Video of the week. Right. Don't ask me if you're still here. Don't comment. I don't know why I, I, I've been following this guy uh, all week. It started, you know, when you get um, um, a suggestion that you watch something and I watched it and everything about it is completely wrong, but I've been hooked. And if you YouTube, I'll put it down below. Uh, I think it's Shay or Shy, it's called. It's S H I E Y. That's all it is. And let me give you, before you start looking, let me give you a bit of a premise of what it's all about. It's about a guy that does everything wrong. So he's a guy that will break into old Soviet war places where there's all old tanks, but he literally breaks in and films his journey. And it's like everything that I don't believe in, but I just find the way he films it and everything is really, really cool. So there you go. Um, that's my video recommendation of the week. I'll put it down below in the notes section. 
below um right so that is it i think we're done and dusted i didn't talk about boring iso or iso and i was going to mention something about women in photography as well something i talked about two weeks ago uh, good i didn't mention them at all so i just want to say a massive thank you to nev and a massive thank you to alan as well my guests and we'll get to do it all over again next week thank you very much indeed everybody out there stay home stay safe and like i say please join me next week that's it have a good one cheers guys